8% Virtual, I've got an unbelievable special guest for you today, and I'm extremely honored and privileged to be interviewing the great, the world's best motivational speaker, Mr. Les Brown. Thank you so much for your time today. You're very kind. I'm a legend in my own mind. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, you always say, you always say, uh, take the time to train your mind, and your mind is the key to success. Without any question. Absolutely. And, and this is the time you really have to do that because things have just been dramatically transformed. I believe that life is built upon disruptions, transformation, and choices that we make. The mm. disruptions are always going to take place. And that's why my favorite book says, think it not strange that you'll face the fiery furnaces of this world. You will, not you might, you will have tribulations. And remember mm. Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> and we have learned that. Let the record show we are in that space right now. <laughs> yes, sir. That's exactly right. That's funny. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Well, I, I've, I was just listening to your, uh, my favorite speech of yours is, is it's not over until I win. Mm -hmm. Absolutely okay. phenomenal. The one in the Georgia Dome. Yes. 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 Talking to 80,000 people. Yes. 80,000. What was it like as an aspiring motivational speaker? What was it like to speak to 80,000 people? I wish I could tell you. I was so scared. I don't remember it. <laughs> That's the truth. But I was prepared for it, though. I was prepared. I, I train speakers. And, and here's one of the things that I teach them. Number one, you have to have a, a regimen that you engage in that prepares you for whatever life throws at you. And it's going to throw some stuff at you. And I had no idea on that day that I was speaking to 80,000. I thought I was going to a banquet room and speak to around 500 people. And a guy asked me, he's walking me down the hall and escorted me when I got there. And he said, what is it like to talk to 80,000 people? I said, I don't know. I'm speaking to one of the banquet rooms here. He said, are you Les Brown? I said, yes. He said, come over here a minute. And he took me and he said, look out there. That's who you're speaking to. I said, whoa. I said, I'll be right back. And I took off running because I saw the sign said restroom. <laughs> he said, where are you going? I said, to the restroom, but it's number one. It's number one. <laughs> oh, man, I was so scared. And so they, I locked the door. And they were stalling, waiting on me. And they kept knocking on the door. And I said, I'm trying to collect myself. I said, I, I can't hear the voices. And then I heard them say, get his mentor, Mike Williams. So they, they went and got Mike. And Mike said, Brownie? I said, yes. He said, man, it's time to come out. They're stalling for you. I said, Mike, it's 80,000 people out there, man. I said, I can't think. He said, Brownie, are you afraid? I said, yes. And he said, Brownie, they came to see you. You didn't come to see them. He mm. said, come out and make your mother proud. I said, don't use my mama on me, Mike. He said, yes, she would love this. They're videotaping it. Come on, man. She'll be proud of you. So I opened the door and I came out. And sometimes you have to have somebody's belief in you until yeah. your belief kicks in. Mm. I said, Mike, do you think I can do this? He said, yes. And mm. we were walking. I said, will you all pray for me? And so they circled me and, and I took their hands and put it on my head. <laughs> As if that was going to make a difference. <laughs> And when I got up the steps, he looked at me and he said, Brownie, hmm. everything you've experienced has prepared you for this. You got this. Oh. I said, okay, Mike, thank you. And I turned, the guy gave me the microphone. And that's all I remembered. <laughs> that was it. I just went for it. I'm just speaking from my heart. What we do, and, and I'll yeah. share this with you and you would have appreciation for it. As speakers, what we do is distract, dispute, and inspire. Mm. How people live their lives is a result 
of the story that they believe about themselves. What we do as speakers, we interrupt that story. We create an experience with our story that distract, dispute, and inspire, that distract them from their current story, and that through the execution of the story that we have experienced and what we've overcome and what we have achieved, we dismantle their current belief system and inspire them, as Mother Teresa would say, to become a pencil in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter in their lives. And so, so when, when you look at the 8% club, virtual, all right, well, how is it that 92% of agents fail? Mm. What is the difference between the 92% and that 8%? Yes. And the difference is the mindset. And so what is necessary is that we have to begin to take them through an experience that they come to believe it's possible. Uh, and, and give you an example. Please. When I went to Dr. Alfred Gosen, who's an oncologist, and he said, Mr. Brown, he said, you have prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And your PSA is 2,400. I said, what does that mean? He said, one to four is normal. And it's metastasized to seven areas of your body. Now, mind you, our life is built on disruptions, transformation, and choices. Mm -hmm. So I asked, is there anything else? He said, yes. I said, what is it? He said, and you're ugly, too. <laughs> This is serious. He said, you're ugly, but you, <laughs> but you got this. He said, wow. I never tell my patients they're terminally ill. What mm. I say is that my knowledge, my abilities, and my skills have terminated. I determine the diagnosis. You and God determine the prognosis. You got this. And because of that, he disrupted my thinking. Cancer is the most feared word in seven different languages. I left this office not with a heart full of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. And, and many, many people in a fearful situation, they forget everything and run. But there are some people in a fearful situation, they face everything and rise. And mm. so those people, those 8%, those are people who face fear and rise they go within and so 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 what i had to do now was i had to work on me and my belief this is 29 years ago and so i had to work on me i'm here in atlanta dr dr taha from pakistan he said i've never seen anybody with fourth stage cancer for 29 years he said you're a real one i want you to talk to my father <laughs> So mindset is everything. Right now, everyone needs to have a ritual that they're listening to something to put something in their mind. Whatever you hear the first 20 minutes when you wake up in the morning affects the spirit of your day. And so this is a time that you want to train your mind to serve you. If you don't train it, be ye not conformed to this world. Let, listen to that word, conform. Don't think like everybody else. Then how, how do we avoid that? Put the stuff in your head that the majority of people are not putting in their head. Most people don't take the time wow. to program their own thoughts. And so I don't watch the media. Why? Because it does not serve me. I only listen to things that are positive, that are purposeful, that's productive, and that's profitable. That's going in the direction of where I'm going. Because in this space where we are, the reason that most people, those 92% of people don't achieve and do what the 8% are doing is because they are being interrupted by what I call mass weapons of destruction in terms of distractions. Wow. They are distracted. They, 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 they are not working on themselves. They're not 
focus on themselves. And so as a result, it pollutes your power. As a result, it compromises and blurs your vision of yourself. That 8%, they're focused. That 8%, they're right. disciplined. That 8%, keep thine eyes single and thy whole body will be full of life. That 8%, they're hungry. That's right. And so in order to, to break out, all of us have greatness within us, but the majority of people die at age 25 and don't get bare until they're 65 because they go through life being focused more on the distractions rather than on their destiny, on their dreams, on the things that they want to achieve. I just turned 76 February the 17th. And one of the things I looked at my journey and my son asked me, he said, how, how did you get here? <laughs> I said, you know, I didn't look to the right. I didn't look to the left. And a lady, she interviewed me and he was listening to the interview. And at the end of the interview, she said, wow. She said, you're 76 and your children know your face. He's my, a picture of my kids behind me because my goal is to build a legacy. A good man leaves a, a, a legacy for his children and for his children's children. When the Lord said be fruitful and multiply, I took him seriously. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Oh, hey, whatever. <laughs> but I said, I said, listen, she said to me, your children know your face. And she was paying me a compliment, but she had no idea. It was a punch in the gut because I don't know my father's face. I've never seen my father or my birth mother. I was born in an abandoned building on a floor in a poor section of Miami, Florida called Liberty City wow. with my twin brother, Wesley. And when we were six weeks of age, we were taken in as foster kids. And then we were adopted. And I was in the fifth grade. I was labeled educable, mentally retarded and put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade. And then I, I failed in the eighth grade. But my junior year in high school, I, I went in this class to look for a friend named MacArthur Stevens. And, and this, this instructor who had a personality like yours, Young man, go to the front of the room and work this problem out for me. I said, oh, sir, I can't do that. Why not? I'm not one of your students. Do it anyhow. I said, I can't. And the other students started laughing. He's Leslie. He's got a twin brother, Wesley. Wesley's smart. He's DT. He asked, what's DT? He's the dumb twin. And I said, I am, sir. And he mm. came from behind his desk. He looked at me. He said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. Do you hear me? I said, yes, sir. Up to that point, I went to summer school every year. My brother never did. Up to that point, I saw myself as the dumb twin. Nobody rises to low expectations. Up to that point, I believe what was spoken to me, and I accepted it. And so... When I say that life is, is full of disruptions, he disrupted my thinking and my vision of myself. And that experience, that encounter, it was transformative for me. He looked at me with the eyes of Goethe, who said, look at a man the way that he is. He only becomes worse, but look at him as if he were what he could be. Then he becomes what he should be. So here's something I'd like to do for you. I, I I love your energy. We just met, but it seemed like I've known you for forever up in here, up in here. I can hear your footsteps. I know you're coming for me, but I'm not scared, all right? <laughs> I'm going to give you a set of motivational messages that I'd like for you to email to all of your agents called Choosing Your Future. Choosing Your Future. It's possible. It's necessary. It's you. It's hard. It's worth it. It's done. I guarantee you the number will grow. If they listen to it every day, I guarantee you, you don't achieve in life what you want. You 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 in, achieve in life what you are. I used to work for the Miami Sanitation Department. I used to work and earn 
around $60,000 a year. Now I earn $70,000 an hour. Still the same person, but my mindset, that's what's different. And so in, in this space, with the coronavirus, with the disruption that's taking place, that's, that's just devastating lives, this is the place that the insurance companies are going to be just incredible. The, 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 the agents who have a larger vision of themselves, the agents that have a mindset mm. of serving the greatest among you will be your servant. The agents that are on a mission, mission possible, helping people to protect themselves, their investment, their families. The agents who have a larger vision of themselves who said, you know what? This is not going to be like it has been for me in the past. I'm not coming into 2021 with a 2020 mindset. Mm. No, I I'm ready to take it to the next level. The, the, the Einstein said, the thinking that has brought me this far has created some problems that this thinking can't solve. This is a time that everybody, if you're serious, you have to mind, you have to have the mindset that you're hungry. Hungry people believe that you have to be relentless. Hungry people believe that you have to continuously to grow. Hungry people believe always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. Hungry people have this mindset of take no prisoners and eat the wounded. Mm. Mm. No, don't you mess with me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, behave. Hello, whatever. <laughs> Gotta be hungry, man. That's this right. It's in the time where we are, the place that late Peter Drucker calls the era of the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. And many times, you don't know how strong you are until you have to be strong. Uh, I like Lion King. Simba, you are more than that which you have become. At 92%, they are more than that which they have produced. And this is a new place where they have to know it's possible that they can do more. And it's necessary that they raise the bar on themselves and they focus and they have to be a non-negotiable person, a no-nonsense person, and, and, and dig deep and do what's necessary, looking for ways to win, to improve, to expand, and to serve the customers that are out there waiting for them and have a sense of mission if you're casual about your dream, your dream will become a casualty. Mm. No, because everybody's out there now that want to make it. And the ones who will break through, the ones who are going to do exceptionally well at 8%, they're hungry. Right. All of us at the end of the day are the same. This world is full of people with broken hearts, empty pockets, and failures. And so as we look at ourselves, we, we have these disruptions. We have to, to accommodate them with our transformation. And then we have choices. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. Robert Frost, two roads diverge in a yellow wood and I, I selected the one less traveled by. My favorite book says, the road that you travel, it's narrow. Why? Because most people are living a misplaced life. Herein my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. We are supposed to be productive. That's why we're here. We were chosen out of 400 million sperm. God had a lot of choices up in here, up in here. We were chosen to produce and, and so most people, they, they are just going through life casually, not taking into account that we have an expiration date. We are supposed to be top performers. An alligator can't be anything but an alligator. A tree can't be anything but a tree. But you and I, we can always transform ourselves. And so this is a time of transformation. At the end of the day, what separates us all are the choices that we make.
Yes. They talk about time management. You can't manage time. All you can do is manage yourself. The mm -hmm. choices that you make, the effort that you put on taking your performance to the next level, the focus, the discipline, where focus goes, energy flows, and productivity increases dramatically. But if you allow yourself to be distracted, I don't answer a telephone call unless it's positive, unless it's purposeful, mm. unless it's productive, or unless it's profitable. Why? I don't have time for that. So good. No. I've got customers that I have to take care of. I, I have my 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 physical needs to take care of, my spiritual needs, I, my family needs. I, I have 15 grandchildren and five great grandsons. And oh. so I'm all of us are here, I strongly believe, to live a life that will outlive us. Hmm. That's why we're here. Harz Mann said we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. And so when you have a mindset that you're not just an agent, you are a messenger of hope. You, you're, you're giving people some options on how to protect themselves from this thing called life. And it's better to have a strategy and protection and not need it than to need it and not have it. That's good. Yes. And there's no saying you can take a horse through the water, but you can't make him drink. However, if you have the mindset and you have effective communication skills, you can create the thirst where they want to drink, where they want to do business with you. And people can smell commission breath. This yes. is the time you want to build relationship capital. So People good. want to know, do you care about me? When you present, whatever you're presenting, they're asking three questions. Who are you? What do you have? And why should I care? Wow. And so when you answer that succinctly and you, you, you answer in a way, speaking from your heart to create trust and confidence and to demonstrate competency that I am the one I'm the one that you need to help you make some decisions that will be in your best interest and your family's interest. Because I have your interest. Zig Ziglar said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so in creating that relationship, that's major today. That's major, more important, relationship capital because that will increase your referral business and your income. Yes. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Well, ha happy, happy uh, belated birthday, by the way. Okay, Thank that's you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. That's amazing. I love the four Ps, by the way, positive, purposeful, productive, and profitable. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I will make sure I never forget that. That's unbelievable. You and Brian Tracy, um, who we just had on, um, both talk a lot about taking personal responsibility. If it's yes. meant to be, it's up to me. Yes. Seems like that's something that you've embodied your whole life. <laughs> yes, because George Bernard Shaw said the people that make it in this life, they look around for the circumstances that they want. And if they can't find them, they create them. Mm. This, wow. this, this thing called life is hard. And we can do hard. If you do what is easy, be a slacker. If you do what is easy, come up with excuses, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, find a way to win. Be focused and disciplined. Provide more service than you get paid for. Yes. Your life will be easy. So good. So good. You, you, you said find a way to win. My father's always said that as a kid. Uh, winners find a way to win. No yes. matter. Yes. They don't settle for it. They don't settle for losing. It's a non-negotiable. My first goal was to buy my mother a home. That's what I wanted to do. You, you have to find something that 
is your why. Nietzsche said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. Mm. So I wanted to buy my mother a home. And I did that. I accomplished that. There are people who say, oh, you're not going to be able to do that. My brothers and sisters who could have helped and didn't participate. And I ignored them because I learned a long time ago what people think about you is none of your spiritual business. I just stayed focused. Hold the vision of what I wanted to achieve. And I realized something that A.L. Williams said. He said, all you can do is all you can do. And all you can do is enough. But make sure you do all you can do. And most people don't give it everything they have. Most people, there's no line for making cold calls. Most people are discouraged when they encounter no or rejection. I built my career on no and rejection. You make know your vitamin. That's what that 8% do. They're, yeah. they're not bought in by that. They go to the next. Next, somebody says no, that means that brings you a step closer to a yes. Over 3 billion people on the planet. Name of the game is TTP. Talk to people. And if that yeah. doesn't work, TTMP. Talk to more people. <laughs> yes. That's what the 8 percenters do. There's nothing magical about it. They're hungry. They have a standard, a sense of deservingness. And they're, they're not going to settle for being average. Average is over. If you mm -hmm. want to make it today, you've got to raise the bar on yourself. When you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are, so you act like you don't have any. That's right. You're the first one to show up and the last one to go to bed at night knowing something you didn't know the day before. That's right. Man, I could listen to you all day. Thank you. <laughs> if someone doesn't leave ready to run through a wall, talk to more people and be motivated after this, man. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with them, Les? Man, you, you, you've always had this listening to you because I was, I, was I was in tears listening to you on Saturday just because of listening to your story and where you've came and the fact that I was going to get to interview you today. It was one of the best highlights of my career and, and just an unbelievable moment for me. So thank you for that. Um, but you. You, you always talk about um, this. You, it seems like you've always had, like, for example, when Mr. Washington was speaking to the group of seniors and you weren't supposed to be in the room, but you were in there anyway, you know, yes. and then the radio opportunity, first opportunity, Les Brown is, I'm, I'm, I'm coming on the air, right? Yes. You, you've always had this, um, it appears that you've always had this inner confidence where you, you believed in yourself when no one else did. If there's going to be a one, less is going to be the one, you know, and you went up to Mr. Washington in the parking lot. I'm the one, Mr. Washington. Remember my name. Yes. Where, where, where's that come from, man? I love, I love hearing it. That comes from watching my mother. My mother, mm. she only had a third grade education, but she always wanted to share her life with kids. She didn't have wow. any kids herself. And I remember she was getting ready to go to work. And I used to rub her ankles because she had arthritis. And she would say, Arthur's bothering me. And I said, Mama, what's Arthur? She said, don't worry, son. You live long enough. You'll find out who Arthur is. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. I'm 76, okay? <laughs> and my mother used to go to work hurt. Knees swollen from arthritis. Ankles swollen. She was unstoppable. Mm. She she was a person who that made things happen a, a no matter what person. That's who those eight percenters are. That's right. I'm going to, I got a certain number that I'm going to hit no matter what. No matter how many no's I get, no matter the state of the economy, no matter what. It's my own personal commitment and what I feel that represents who I am as a person. And that's why self-development is so very important. Now more than ever for mental resolve, because things are happening to all of us. Over this year, all of us will experience at least three tragedies. Something will happen to us personally, and something is going to happen to someone we care about. So mental resolve is very important. Mm. Next thing is, 
the the willingness to continue to to sharpen your skills. Abraham Lincoln said, if I had six hours to chop a tree down, I'll spend four hours sharpening my axe. Sharpening your skills, upgrading your skills, always willing to get better. If you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. But if you're willing to learn, because this is a new place where we are, you have to throw your net on the other side. And, and people are fearful. This is the attention economy. And so you've got to be able to capture that attention, hold that attention, and ignite it to create that thirst, that want to. There's an old saying, you take a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. But if you know how to communicate effectively, virtually, you create a thirst where they want to drink. Right. And so the other thing that's important is creating collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships. Mm. The people that you communicate with most, you earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest associates. And so, part of what we must do and be mindful of to look at our relationships periodically and ask, what is this relationship doing to me? If I was in the ninety-two percent. I'll be following that 8% to find out what they're doing. That's right. Why? Sidney Poitier wrote a book called The Measure of a Man. He said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens without being spoken. Either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Mm. Whose pace have you adjusted to? Okay. So, so the 92%, got to understand and know this 8%, they are an example of what's possible for them, not an exception. Success leaves clues. And so when, when I decided to come into this industry, one, I wanted to learn everything that I could. Two, I wanted to learn how to make myself stand out. The, the industry has been governed by the tale, Dale Carnegie course. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Then tell them what you told them. No, my mentor said, Brownie, never let what you want to say get in the way of what your clients want to hear. Mm. They were going around giving information from thinking grow rich. If information could change people, everybody would be skinny, rich, and happy. Use your story to distract, dispute, and inspire. When you just give people information, that infects and impact two areas of the brain. But when you use a story strategically to create a significant emotional event, that impacts five areas of the brain and the chemistry that people feel when they are in love. Because we're emotional people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. I can't wait to get to an audience. I love what I do and I live the life that I love. <laughs> <laughs> I well, talking to you, you are so much fun. Yes. Th thank you so much, buddy. You, you've been unbelievable. Um, we're, 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 we're getting really close to about 33, 34 minutes. I want to be very, um, uh, respectful of your time as it is extremely valuable and we are gracious to have you today. I'd love for you to, in, 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 in closing, if you could leave one thing to those that are currently a part of the 92%, but man, they want to be a part of the 8%. What would Mr. Les Brown leave with them? You have something special. Yeah. You have greatness in you. You can do more than you can ever begin to imagine right. and commit yourself to bet on you, commit yourself to reach beyond your comfort zone. There's power in pursuit because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. Mm. Rob the cemetery of your greatness. God, you have man. greatness in you. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. There we go. I love it. I love it. Unbelievable, buddy. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you. Really enjoy getting a chance to spend some time with you. 8%, you've heard it here first. Now let's get out there and become great.
Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. Hey, I'm back with another interview, man. Special guest today, a tech wizard today, okay? My buddy, Mr. Corey Bell from Lead to Client CRM. What's up, Corey? How you doing, Cody? Doing fantastic. Yeah, man, I'm doing awesome, brother. Appreciate you asking. Um, so I would love for them, because you've got a